Like most other things these days, the price for chicken feed has risen. So to help offset the cost, we are now selling our extra eggs. We eat a lot of eggs in our family, but not quite enough to keep up with our hens. And soon our pullets will join the flock and start laying too. Maybe even throughout the winter, if we're lucky. In my last video, I harvested garlic scapes for the first time. And now I'm going to show you what I did with them because I thought it turned out really well. I decided to make a pesto with these, so I chopped them up, removing anything that seemed too woody or tough. So before I could make the pesto in my food processor, I needed to grate up a giant block of Parmigiano-Reggiano cheese. I tend to order cheese in bulk from Azure or buy it from Costco, so my favorite thing to do with it is grate it up all at once and then store a little bit of it in the fridge and freeze the rest. Ella's turn. After the cheese was grated, I got to work on making the pesto. I didn't follow a recipe for this, so I don't have measurements, but basically I pulsed the scapes until they were small to make room for the rest of the ingredients. And then I added a couple handfuls of cheese, a handful or two of walnuts, some salt, pepper, extra virgin olive oil, and lemon juice because I didn't have any lemons. So after I got it down to more of a paste consistency, I was able to give it a taste and adjust some of the ingredients. I ended up adding more olive oil, lemon juice, and salt. And then I processed it again until it was the texture I wanted, and then went ahead and scooped it up into my silicone muffin molds so I could freeze it and store it in a bag for later. I already used some of this pesto on salmon and it was so good. I will definitely make this again next year. And it's also been suggested to me to try escape pickles, which sounds amazing too. If you have any recipes or ideas for scapes, I'd love to hear about it in the comments below. So I just cast on something new this week. Initially, I was gonna make something for myself, but uh, I thought I had more yarn than I did. So when I saw that I had less, I ended up having to redirect and choose something else. So I'm going with a sweater jacket type of thing for my girls. Um, and I liked this pattern, Teasel. It's a Brooklyn Tweed pattern by Jennifer L. Pericini. And, uh, yeah, it's a textured shawl collar cardigan. And I'm knitting the largest size, which is for a 12 year old, because they go by ages when it comes to kids knits. And uh, my oldest daughter is seven, so I'm really hoping that it will last for years. It will probably be my last kids knit for a while and I'm gonna start to knit some stuff for myself again. So anyway, this is the back piece. I finished that a couple days ago. And this yarn is so lovely to work with. It looks soft but it's quite rustic and it's got 
a halo that just kind of continues to develop as it gets worn. And that's why I wanted to make something that would be more like outerwear style with this yarn because I really feel like it makes a great jacket type of thing. Um, and it's also really lightweight. Smells sheepy. And of course I, I can never help it. I always have to knit patterns that have a lot of texture. It kills my fingers, but I love the way it turns out, so I have to do it. So after I finished the back on the sweater, I cast on for the, I think it's the right front piece, and this is how far I've gotten on it so far. And this Progress Keeper is from Maria of Woolen Forest. This is probably my favorite one. So other than my knitting, I've just been mostly waiting for the garden harvest to roll in. Probably the coolest and rainiest year that I can remember in recent history. So we don't have ripe tomatoes right now like we normally would, ripe peppers, things like that, which is kind of bumming me out a little bit because I was so gung-ho and like prepared for food preservation this year. So I'm just kind of hoping that this heat wave we're having right now helps to get my garden going and I can start doing all of that. And we're also taking it a little bit easier with projects this year. We are only just now starting to work on a couple of homestead projects. So for instance, we are taking our long neglected back patio area and we're setting up a lean-to shelter kind of thing. And I'm gonna set up sort of an outdoor kitchen out there. All right, so this is our next project. We are cutting out a space in the grass here that goes all the way over to that sheltered area by the garage and we are gonna dig it all out and put down some weed barrier and fill it in with gravel. And then we're gonna um, put a shelter here, probably in, I don't know what you call it, an awning? What do you call it, an awning? Yeah, like a shed roof or an awning. that's very exciting and it will be like a huge upgrade for us to have that space and then the other thing that we're working on right now is we have this corner of our property where it's really difficult to reach it uh, because it's surrounded by two separate creeks anyway we finally went ahead and built a big bridge you know like big enough and sturdy enough that um, you could get like a truck over there or a tractor or a gator or whatever And that's kind of exciting because we still have trees down in that area that fell 
um, in 2021's Ice Storm that we just haven't been able to get to. The ghosts have been able to get over there and, and thin things out, but it's wild and we need to kind of um, clean it up. We are making yet another alteration to the goat barn to accommodate our two newest arrivals. We brought home this pair from a farm in Washington last month. One is a beautiful little blue-eyed doling, and the other is her sweet weathered brother. The doling is from Amazing Dairy Lines, so we're excited to see how she grows and develops, and if she might potentially become one of our foundation does. So we're gonna put them in this little stall over here, so they get their own little space. Let go. No. This guy wants to be held. Don't grab his tail, please. Put your arms up. He'll, I think he wants to sit on you. Yeah, if he wants to go out, you let him out.